Boreal forest or taiga comprises about 10 or 12 percent of the Earth's land surface. So go from North America to Europe to Asia and across the top, right up in the north, and mountainous areas further south, there's large amounts of taiga. So Canada and Russia has huge amounts of taiga, of boreal forest. And I'm here in Mongolia, which is at the southern edge. So larch is the main species here. But visit boreal forest in other parts of the world, and there's a range of different species. But they're pines and firs and spruce and larch as consistently the dominant species. And obviously, in this cold, uh, often dark conditions, it's difficult for plants to grow. And so they have a series of adaptations. So the trees are often tall and narrow and pointed with, with branches at an angle. And that makes it less likely that snow will collect on the branches and break the branch or pull down the tree although that does sometimes happen. And they have a whole series of adaptations. Also, they, um, uh, the, 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 the season for growth is quite short because it's dark for a lot of the year. And so the other species I've talked about, the firs and the pines and the spruce are um, evergreens. The larch here are uh, uh, deciduous and drop their leaves. And that means that if you're an evergreen, that at the beginning of the season, you can start your growth uh, and photosynthesize over a short period of time. And also by retaining your leaves, it means you're retaining your nutrients, when nutrients are very difficult to obtain. Because if you look at the soils, you can see the soils are acidic, and the soils are thin. There's some organic matter, but not a huge amount. Um, often they're waterlogged. They're poor in nutrients, and that means they have um, they overcome that partly by having associations with mycorrhizal fungi to extract nutrients. As the nutrients are poor, then uh, are low in nutrients, then keeping on to your nutrients through evergreen leaves is a good strategy. The um, the, uh, the, the soil system is shallow, and that means very often the root systems are also shallow, as you could see here, and that makes them vulnerable to wind damage. So these systems have a whole series of disturbances. They're disturbed by wind flow, they're disturbed by heavy snow, uh, they're disturbed by fire, so fire in the summer is a serious issue for these forests. Um, uh, they have pests outbreaks, and if you, look, if you look at the top of the hillside here, you can see there's a lot of dead trees there. Uh, I suspect that's probably due to drought, but I'm not sure. And so the tiger system, the boreal forest system, is a dynamic system. There's very often disturbances, and then the, the, the gaps are filled in by birch and aspen uh, and larch, um, uh, which, then, which then grow, and then the conifers grow back later. So boreal forests are uh, one of the great systems on the planet. We tend not to think that much about it, certainly in Europe, in, certainly in, in the UK, for example, but it is uh, a really important global habitat and it's likely to be vulnerable to climate change in the future.